This video tutorial shows how to use two useful tools, Virtual Beam and Virtual Strip on two simple examples. Firstly, a chimney model will be analyzed, where the surface area of the chimney is made from shell elements. You can see the rendered chimney model, different colors present different shell thicknesses. The approximate circle shape of the cylinder surface area made from narrow shell elements. The following loads on the chimney are defined. A load of inner liners material. Dead load of reinforced concrete. A wind load, which simulates the effect of wind swirling around the chimney in a wind load from laminar flow. And loads from temperature increasing and decreasing. The next step is running the model. After running you can display the surface internal forces. You can see the specific axial forces in the local y direction. Turn off the display of the domain, and this way the internal forces are more visible. There may be a need to see also fictive beam internal forces of this cantilever chimney. This is when you can use the function virtual beam of axis VM. When you start the function you have two options, you can choose a virtual beam or a virtual strip. In case of a virtual beam, the program takes the selected domains and their associated ribs as a basis. In case of a virtual strip, you can specify one strip width, even across more domains. Then the program reads out the surface and rib internal forces and integrates them into a fictive beam's internal forces. Firstly, try out using up a virtual beam in this model. Define a new virtual beam. Select the chimney in the front view. Now select only the domains of the superstructure, not the foundation because you are only interested in internal forces of the superstructure. The program asks where the virtual beam axis is. It's suitable for me at the midline. The previous setting form appears. There is a chance here to reset the local coordinate system of the virtual beam. In case of basic settings, the program determines the bounding volume of the selected domains and local X will be located parallel to the longer side of the volume. This is good now, so the setting can be automatic. To get a better view of the virtual beam's internal forces, turn off displaying domains. If virtual beams exist, you can get results of virtual beam's internal forces. You can choose the distribution of bending moments. Now change to diagram view. You can see how bending moment diagram develops in the y direction. Also turn off the color coding to get a better picture. In the middle of the chimney, the axis of the virtual beam appeared with brown color. In the background, the program divides the virtual beam into intermediate cross sections with sufficient divisions. Along the virtual beam, perpendicular to it, reads out the surface internal forces and shows the integral of surface internal forces, for example in the form of bending moment. You also get a shear force diagram.
you also can get an axial force diagram. You can see on the diagram, how axial force distribution develops along the height. This example illustrated the usefulness of virtual beam function, since you don't have to build another model to get beam internal forces, but the program provides them from the surface internal forces. Another model is a stylized model of a box girder bridge. This is a three-pillar bridge, stiffened with diaphragms over the supports. Put surface loads on the model. These are loads of the carriageway, and concentrated load on the bridge. Run the static analysis considering the model as a surface structure. You get deflection diagrams and surface internal forces as a result. Distributed axial force in X direction can be chosen from surface internal forces. In this case, the local X direction is the same as the global X direction, parallel to the longitudinal axis of the bridge. The question arises, if you treat the structure as a two-span continuous beam, how can you get the beam internal forces? You also create a virtual beam and a virtual strip for this. Start with a virtual beam which will be located in the longitudinal axis of the bridge. Select the domains that you want to participate in the analysis. In this case, domains along the entire length of the bridge. The axis should be in the center line of the virtual beam. Apply the basic settings for local settings, too. As you can see, the program determined the center line of the bridge, this will be the longitudinal axis of the virtual beam. Perpendicular for this longitudinal axis the program integrates the surface internal forces of the box girder bridge. After defining the virtual beam you can see the internal forces of the virtual beam. The bending moments of the virtual beam can be queried, but you can also choose shear internal forces. You can see the stepping of the shear internal force diagram as a result of concentrated force. If you are curious about the internal forces of the upper deck plate, you can also use the virtual strip to view them. Next, define a virtual strip. Create it in the middle of the upper deck plate. The virtual beam can be turned off now. As you can see, the width of the virtual strip is half half meters in both directions. This is the default setting, you can use these values. Currently, the virtual strip is 1 meter wide. So you have to get the value precisely of the distributed internal forces. Using a virtual strip you get the integrated internal forces in the set strip width of a plate. Switch to the side view.
Selecting the axial force diagram shows the upper deck plate is in compression between supports. But at the middle support, the upper plate is in tension. The value of compression is 1202 kN. Since you've set a 1 meter wide virtual strip, this force can be easily checked if we return to the axial force diagram. Rotate a little on the model. And you see that the compression is 1202 knots on the upper part of the deck plate, indeed. Go back to the bending moment diagram of the virtual strip. In the diagram display slightly distort scaling and now you can see the bending moment diagram of the upper deck plate. To summarize, both the virtual beam and virtual strip make work easier, because building a beam model is unnecessary to get beam internal forces on a surface model. With Axis VM software there is no limit you can make.